taste buds. They come into the mic, talking about the food they hate, talking about the food they like. Two fools gonna fight, but only one food can be right. Taste buds, man, yeah, they come into the... Hey, folks, welcome to T-A-S-T-E Buds. It's a beautiful day in New York City. It is a beautiful day. It's a beautiful You were ill day. yesterday, and then we thought you might have also gotten the... Believe it or not, COVID, which, by the way, I know six people will have it now. And by the way, the people are like, COVID? COVID's over. This isn't a, poli- like, it's, it's, it still is the COVID. Like, it tests positive for COVID, so it's what I have. Yeah, I I'm know. I'm not saying I care or believe in it or don't or the, you know, it's a conspiracy. Like, people get so fucking heated. People Why do. Why are you mentioning COVID? COVID's been gone. Really? Because I fucking tested positive <laughs> for it, and I was out for the count. People do. Uh, call I it was, whatever you want. I was sick. I was terrified that I had COVID because I was staying, I was away, and I was staying with a friend while I was away, and while I was away, I was my allergies were really bothering me, but my friend, his mother lives with him, and w- when I went to leave, she had been so hospitable, and the last day I was leaving, my allergies were really bothering me, and she was like, it was so nice having you. She was so sweet, and I said... I'm not going to hug you just in case my allergies are a cold. Yeah, you still and don't want to take out any old folk. And she goes, she goes, oh, it doesn't matter. Come here and hugged me anyway. Everything, every fucking day. About the light I had on you. Jesus. Everything. was crazy. But I. Sorry, I just spilled my drink all over me to check today's box. I can tell you that. Uh, now I'm wet for the whole episode. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Shit. I was in a good mood. I could tell you that that's not a hex. You hastily opened that and <laughs> barely touched your lips with it. Can I tell you something? Poured it down your front. My hand to my hand to our Lord. This morning, that already happened to me with my green juice, with my uh, with my athletic greens. And I said, "All right, there's a spill for today." Now I'm doubling up on. I it. think you're just not paying attention and just pouring. Do you think that I'm not paying attention every day that I spill a drink on myself? It's a light hack. I got to tell you, dude, you're you're a little bit scattered, all right? And that's but not a Joe, criticism. But the, but the, but but the just consistency. The Am I scattered every time I take a sip of a beverage? We were just out in the lobby thing, the kitchen area, excuse yeah. me. You said, can you hand me two? I, you specifically requested two drinks in the fridge. I handed you both drinks, and then you walked away, <laughs> forgetting that you had even asked me for them. No, no. And I, I said, Sal, your two drinks, and you had to turn around and go back and get I'll them. tell you what happened in my head. In my head, I was about to leave to go to the bathroom, and I thought you were going to walk back with them. And so when I exited without them, I, re- I thought... I was ahead back. of you. I was walking ahead of you. Joe, I don't know what to That tell you. very drink you just spilled on yourself was the drink requested. <laughs> uh, yeah. So but anyway, so I was... Sta- okay, so I was sta- my, my, my friend's mom, very sweet, and she was like... She goes, oh, stop it. It doesn't matter, and hugged me. And I was like, she's probably right. It's just allergies. And then and, you got home. Got and then you. I got home, and I felt fine Monday night when I got home. And then I woke up yesterday and I was like, oh, my God, I am so sick. And I, and I was, I, I just was like, uh, here it is. Here it is. I'm going to have COVID. Yeah, I, I was sure you it had to it. my friend's mom. I was sure you had it because uh, two people we called to fill in for me in case I was sick have it. Yeah. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. It's going around. I mean, look, but it, I is, don't have it, it is what it is. A severe cold, a flu, a virus, cold, whatever you want. But I don't want to get other people sick. Right. That's why we had to. Well, that's why we had to postpone the live stream. Yes, and you know what it is. It's when it's a new rescheduled date is Wednesday, May thirty first. Uh, a couple of changes. Nine p.m. Eastern time. It's, everything's the same on your end. Nine p.m. Eastern. All the tickets are honored. For those of you who couldn't make May tenth, uh, I ended up getting ill, and we had to postpone it to Wednesday night, nine p.m. May thirty first. This is the first ever live stream taste buds. In case you've been living under a rock. You can get tickets uh, in the link of this video. You can get tickets on any of our social pages links or go to moment.co, moment, like in the moment, .co slash taste buds, right? Yes. Uh, and moment.co. Yeah. moment.co. Yeah. And we have some big... And that's also where you go if you need, if you can't attend. Yeah, if you want a refund. you need a refund or whatever. Yeah. But, but uh, yeah. let me tell you, the show of support has been fantastic, guys. Yes. And uh, if you couldn't make it, if you didn't realize when it was, if you, this is the first time you're hearing of it, May 31st, you can still get tickets. We have a lot of surprises planned still. Be fun. Some really funny surprises. Yes. S- about, I mean, a handful of guests. Yes. Some big surprise guests, hopefully. And uh, and then the battle, we're, we're keeping under wraps until then, but... 
It's a good one. No one has any idea who's going to win goodie. this battle. Oh, and then the, and special merch is going to be available too. That's right. Ordered a limited run of these specialty taste buds. Shout out to the artist. Let's plug the artist down below, pimp, uh, who made this. She's really wonderful. Uh, shout outs to her. You may remember the I'm hating it. Uh, Ronald, that this came out. We tweeted this a while yeah, back. Yeah, she did that. We loved yeah. it so much. We asked her to add me thematically into the picture. Yeah. I'm the little boy here, as you can see. So Joe and I are going to sign these mm -hmm. uh, and a number them. We're going to sign them a number because there's only a, there's only a, a certain amount. I think two hundred or two hundred fifty or something. One hundred fifty or two hundred. Yeah, to it's not total. A lot. Yeah. Um, we're going to sign them, date them, or number them, and uh, they are going to go on sale. During the live stream, you'll be able to buy them um, in the link of the live stream, and then you know, and then after that week. But once they're sold out, they're gone, and we are hand uh, hand numbering these ourselves. Also, one last thing about the live stream: it's gonna go, it's gonna go to, it will be available in demand uh, For the following week. Yeah. So and then that's it. That's that. This is that's it. For that's this. a good point to bring. And up. this is the only time you'll ever not not ever, but but first time ever. You'll be able to watch the episode and vote in real time while you're watching the argument, and that's it for this episode. Like that, this episode will be live streamed, and then it'll be available in demand, and then that's it. Yeah, if you're not in it, you're not going to see it. Uh, this was probably our biggest episode. Yeah, yet, I right? would say so. So yeah, so and then other people were asking, like, oh, I can't do it that night. Well, the ticket is good for after that's one week on demand, like yeah. Joe said. So you have the whole week to watch it, watch it again. Um, and then after that, that's it. It's not being put up. So this is the only way to join us and see this thing. Yeah, and it'll be fun. And uh, and it'll be a big episode, too. So we realize people buying tickets. You're, you're paying for a ticket. We appreciate that. We're going to give you a bit, some bang for your buck. Don't worry. Yeah, you know? but we've also it's not going to be two just and a half years of free. Of, well, that too. And we don't have a Patreon. We don't ask for anything. I know. I didn't want to bring it up. <laughs> the, uh, we also but, have regular merch if you want to go on our page. The point is, is it's not going to just be us sitting on this couch. You know, we're we're you know what I mean. We're yeah. delivering. Oh, for sure. It'll be us sitting, but but yeah, we're going to no, deliver. It's going to be good. We're really getting into it. Um, and also, actually, I just found out that our, our merch uh, our merch is low. And so if you have never gotten merch yet, the designs that we have out right now are nearing their end of their run. And uh, that'll be the, that's the only time that you can get that first run of merch. And then we um, will, once that's out, we will start anew. Speaking of, speaking of I'm hating it, I want to go back to the sick thing in a minute. But speaking of I'm hating it, do you smell the smell coming through the window that smells like burgers and fries? Yes, I do. It smells McDonald's-y, does it not? Or Wendy's-ish? <laughs> It smelled. I think I smelled something when I walked into the it smells room, but I've so it's regulated. Good, dude. It smells like burger with ketchup. You, am I wrong? No, it's probably like a. It's probably something. It's probably. What something. were you gonna say? I what? No, I just you. Somewhere in your life, McDonald's <laughs> got their hooks into you. Big. Now I don't know. If, I don't know if it's a if it's a bigger conspiracy than we even know. Like someone injected you with something to make you fiend for it and <laughs> smell it at all times. I feel like if you were having a stroke or a heart attack, you'd smell McDonald's, not toasted bread, <laughs> not burnt bread. No, but or I think maybe something you don't. I would love to talk to you, it, like and 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 pinpoint when McDonald's became your savior. I can tell you that as a child. There was no food on earth I liked more. Period. I, let's, it's tough to be when you're a kid. Let me let me take you through the steps uh, or the moments. I birthday party every year at McDonald's, hands down. I remember you did have that. Yes, I went to them. I never had one of my own. I had them. So you had the characters and stuff. Oh, uh, I, I honestly I can't remember if they had the characters. I mean, that's stuff. I think that's the we had our big selling point. Unless you had, I, the, did you have probably did, but we had the play place. This is pre play place, dude. Play place was kind of later in the in the you game. You think so? Was I was young enough to to have enjoyed it at a time, but like I'm talking like since I was a little little kid, like we'd have my birthday yeah. lunch or dinner. There's at no more McDonald's. Are there any more McPlay places? Do you even know what a McPlay place? Barely. Is? Okay. I I mean Barely. I don't know if those went went away. They're kind of gone. They would germ. They would yeah. germ. Uh, friggin. Yeah. They were they were gross. Havens, um, but there was a ball pit. In my in our main McDonald's, well not main, we have like twenty of them, but the main one, 
uh, that I went to when I was a kid. It was a ball pit that was unmatched. I mean, it was it was big in size, and 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 they let you. There was really no rules. What they, I let, liked, they let you go bat shit in there. What I liked big more than the ball pit was the uh, the Mayor McCheese uh, jail tower they had. Where you could yes. crawl up into his head and look out through the bars. Yes, I really enjoyed no, was that. Was that the mayor or was that the policeman? Because that's why oh, it, was it must a have been jail, the policeman. Right? Well, wait, who was the policeman? I don't remember. Yeah, wasn't his head a cheeseburger? I thought that. No, that's a Mayor McCheese. McCheese. Was there a police constable? <laughs> constable. I think. I yeah, think there was, he is. Yeah, it was. That's. That's him. He has a big cheeseburger head. Oh, Officer Big Mac. Oh shit! No, that's, that's a good rap name. That is a good <laughs> rap name. That is a good rap name. Uh, um, no, that's uh, yeah. You could remember you could climb up into his head. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah, that was it. Was like a and you went up there. And it, was like tower. A little, it was a little. Yeah, <laughs> you went up through the middle. You had to be careful, but then you got up there and you sat up there. You felt like you were in the Statue of Liberty. Yeah, it was. That was amazing. As a there kid. he is. Look there it is. That. Wow, awesome. That looks. Oh, awesome. you got to throw that up, pimp, because this is bringing back big memories. Whoa, where was an outdoor McPlay place? All of mine. Mine was, was outdoor. Oh, mine was indoor. I never even saw an indoor one. Oh, rain or shine, baby. <laughs> Didn't matter. Yeah, mine was outdoor. Look at that. Look at that. Which frightening thing? That's that's what the awesome. hell is that? Looks like a literally looks like a, 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 a one of those things you burn on a lawn. But I'll, <laughs> but I'll it tell looks you, like dude, Burning Man. The outdoor particularly got gross. Yeah, because I not mean, only it do you was have the elements, the elements, right? right? And they're not washing those balls. They're no, not. No, no. There's no way to wash them. And yeah. They're not washing them. This they was... don't remove them and put them back. And nobody goes in there and cleans them ball by ball. Which means that if that thing was there for ten years, then every kid with a snot on his nose, yes. coughing, hacking, licking those balls. If you think about it right now, they probably had to it get was rid the of them. Eighties, dude. They probably it had was, to get rid of them because scene. of like a, a get. A, 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 look how look how short that is. That's ridiculous. I swear to God, I thought it was twelve feet in the air at least. You don't think that's a short one? Wait, where is that one? In no man's land. This guy. Bought the stuff. No, he and didn't. Put it on his own property. No, he did not. <laughs> Holy shit! This guy bought a mayor. Mc <laughs> this guy bought a officer Big Mac jail tower, and put it in his yard. That's straight gangster. Yeah, that's awesome. I would want that in my yard. Are you kidding? I gotta me? tell you, the thought never crossed my mind until I'm seeing it here. Yeah. And now I want to do it. I bet you. I bet you. There's a bunch of those laying around in a warehouse somewhere that we can get our hands I on. I bet it's you. I bet you they're more attainable than you would think. We should get one and do a podcast live from the inside. <laughs> Just me and I, you laying in a circle. I'll tell you what I would. You know what I would do if I had if I had a big yard with like a pool, and I could I would do this. I'd erect the McDonald's, the Golden Arch sign, the illuminated red <laughs> sign. With the, See, something's wrong with you. But don't you think no, that would look awesome in your backyard next to your pool as the a golden decoration? golden arches? You tell me you don't think Wait, that would Wait, what does that have cool. to do with the pool? I'm saying if I had a backyard with like a pool area, like, uh, you know, where you... you dress the yard you dress, up. I'd put the, the skinny pole with the illuminated McDonald's sign. You mean the one that's like billion served? The one that like on the street? The, the, the sign that stands in front of the restaurant. You would put that sign in your yard? Yeah. You don't think that would look awesome as a yard decoration? I'm having conflicting insane. feelings because I, I think at least um, Officer Big Mac is meant to be in a play, like, a, like a, it's, it's, it has a function. You're telling me nighttime, you're by the pool, lit pool, dark, dark, lit pool, above you is a glowing red and red and yellow McDonald's. So you don't think that would be like awesome and warm I, I, I and think fun? It, I think maybe, yeah, in the right yard. I think it would look you very know, I think cool. you need a really big yard. I don't think you need like, I don't think you could have like a, a, a like one of those blocks where there's a house next to a house next to a house. In my head right now, is Q, I'm thinking of Q's backyard. Okay. <laughs> I think it would look cool. How funny would it be if someone was able to Erect that in his or someone's yard without them knowing, and then they come home and it's in the yard. It's a big swing Let's because see. it's going to be it's going to be uh, an arduous task and an expensive one at that. I don't think it'd be that expensive. You have to excavate and drive, and and then transport a forty foot steel pole to the yard and then drive it into the ground. Then make sure it's secure. In in, in, in literally in a logistical sense, sure. and then probably run some electric to it. And then hope it doesn't fall on the person's house. By so, the way, but not that sign. That's not the sign I mean. Look at that McPlay place. Did you see yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. That looked like a goddamn, that looked like Six Flags. But that, <laughs> not that sign. Not the sign on the actual building. The red thing that looks like the fries with the M on top of it. 
Do you, you, mean, you mean like the po- like the steel like a, like a, like the like the sign on a pole outside? Yeah. yeah. Do you think I should ask you? You know, if Just and McDonald's when McDonald's sign, if I and think. when you yeah, that one, that what, one, down, 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 that. Yeah, the one that says like drive through. You don't think that'll be difficult? Do you understand how much money and manpower that would take? If I look it up, <laughs> you would need a fucking if I, <laughs> freight train. If I look it up and I can afford it, if it's not crazy, what happened to that one's? There's only one arch on that one. That's the original. Um, there were that was no. the that was. Did you ever see the founder? No, that was the one. Was it in St. Louis or something? That was the prototype. He, they made one of those, and like the original, one of the original McDonald's is two of those signs. And then somebody was like, "Oh, the M." They separated the arches. It was always the M, but they separated. Like I think that's just one of the original arches from the original McDonald's or whatever. Okay. But the. I swear to God, if I look it up and it's not that expensive, I'm going to ask you if he would allow me to pay to have it <laughs> put into his It yard. will be expensive. He will not let you, and you will not want to spend the You don't think he would let me? No I, way. I think he's crazy ever. enough. I think he's crazy enough he'd go, yeah. Uh. Maybe if it was like a billboard for Superman or something. There's, <laughs> there's no way he's putting that in his yard. But right. I will tell you. By the way, is there anything worse of a drop-off? I don't mean to cut you off. Is there anything worse of a drop-off than that McDonald's sign that says drive through the fun, the inviting allure of it, whatever? Is there any worse drop-off than that to the McCafe sign? The most bland, like, yuppie-looking, ugh. Yeah, they really tried to to latch on to something with the McCafe. Oh, God. I remember in the late 90s. They went friends. They I tried rem- to make it look like friends. I remember in the late '90s, cafe wasn't a term that ran rampant in a in like a, the restaurant business. Cafes, like the term cafe and the idea and concept of a cafe, burst onto the scene in the '90s. It might have had to do with friends, but um, I remember because I remember all these businesses kept popping up in my neighborhoods, and we had never heard of it. And like this place, Luna Cafe opened, right? And that's that's been there for, for 30 years now. And then this and that. And I remember I worked at a place called Classic Pizza. And the family owned a few chains and like different cousins like owned each one. Mm-hmm. And the one that was opening out on the other side of the island, he was going to call it Classic Pizza Cafe because he said cafe is all anybody wants these days now. It blew up. And then I McDonald's gotta, tried to... I got to tell you, pl- classic pizza cafe sounds like a fun time to me. There was, was three words like, together. It was on a fun. corner and it was on a main... It was on Main Street. All right. It's fun. It's fun. Mick Cafe that bothered me. But yeah, wait, that, but back to my McDonald's history. Yeah. I remember the first time I had chicken McNuggets. Ever? Yeah, backseat of my parents' car. My friend Frankie... <laughs> Yeah, my friend Frankie Gennardi Back got them. my parents' call. Let's yeah. an episode. My friend Frankie Gennardi got them and handed me one, and it. I was like, what is going on here? Now, but prior to <laughs> that, you had here? a chicken nugget. Uh, no, I don't think I, I don't think, I don't think you I never knew had it. a piece of fried chicken. I, I had know. fried chicken. I don't think I ever yeah, knew maybe what a chicken right. nugget maybe, was. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe they, chicken fingers weren't popular. Like No, no, yeah. The, uh, I remember when the, when the first the Happy Meals. When the chicken nugget came on, it was lights out. I didn't want yeah. anything but that. The first Happy Meals, where it was the plastic, like, submarine, game-changing, life-changing, birthday party there every year. And then, but here's the thing. In high school... I, got, I like this, guy. In high school, uh, James Pinkstone, who I believe Great I mentioned name. on this show... Pink but I, Stone or you, Pink? You've met Pinkstone. Remember my friend... Pig? Pink. His last name is P-I-N-K-S-T-O-N-E. Yes, Pinkstone. Pink and Stone. Yeah. Two words put together. Yeah. You met him. He was my friend that came up, and we did that. We hopped around to a bunch of bars. Yeah. Summer day, whatever. Was it your B-Day? No. We just hopped. Not that. Yes, no, I do no, remember. Not those friends are different. It was, it was a bunch of us, and we just went. We started at the barcade. Yes. Whatever. You met him. Anyway, when I, when I became best friends with him in high school, he also loved McDonald's, and we did a thing where every time we had a half day on a Friday, which was often in Catholic high school, we would go to McDonald's, and it was back then. The, you went the, to Catholic high school. Yeah, back then the um, don't skirt past it. I, I didn't know that. I just don't want to digress past the story. We won't. But I'll tell you. But I did too. We should talk about that sometime. Okay. Um, back then, the two cheeseburger value meal, which was the king value meal, lights out. 
it was two ninety nine. Three ninety nine. I thought, yeah, two ninety nine. Yeah, yeah. two ninety nine. That's with a medium soda and small fry, right? Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, two ninety nine. I mean, it was value. I mean, you get yeah, you show me more value. You can't tell me where there's more value. Well, you can't. It was meal for meal for value. They invented the value meal. I yeah. mean, these guys these guys have broken ground in ways that nobody has. Anyway, we would do this thing where it was it was every other time the the one of us had to buy for the other guy. Sure. And it was called the three bucks. So we'd go and you go, the three bucks is on your side. And the, so that was like a tradition through my high school. So, dude, McDonald's, like, from age four or five through high school. And did you ever, like. Was a constant tradition. Okay. Did you, was it just, like, any fast food? Or were you, like, loyal? Like, if you if you went to Burger King, it was fine. You still got the Burger King toy. You still sat in Burger King. It just. Uh, Burger King was a nice. Wendy's. Was like, a nice, like, diversion. I, no, I liked it all. All right. So you but, weren't but, hating but, on. You weren't hating. No, no. But I love. But McDonald's was king. Well, we Burger. Well. King. Okay. <laughs> uh, Burger King was a nice treat. I felt like I was going over the neighbor's house for a minute. Burger King. When yeah. did they? When did they bring out the king and make him like this weird character that people thought was like, like funny and and campy and mischievous and stuff? He, because when we were little, I don't know if he was like. I believe he was an. I believe there was a cartoon king when we were little. But right. when we got older was but, when they started doing that like plastic head king, which yeah. was terrifying. Yeah, it was terrifying, yeah, right? It was like fun. freaky, dude. Yeah. But I, Burger King was fun because they give you the paper crowns. Yeah. Remember that? Do they still do it? I think you can still get it if you ask. But like. I'll tell you another thing I think Burger King did that McDonald's may not have. A four pack of crayons and a placemat to color on. Uh, I think McDonald's did that. If you, I think it was Burger King's jam, dude. I think that it was a Burger King set of four crayons. I mean, dude, here's the thing, man. You know, it was the '80s. I like nice touches like that. So shout out to any restaurant that gives you crayons and a Denny's placemat. was big with that. Yeah, Denny's was big with the crayons. Shout out to crayons and placemats. I agree, but I mean, dude, I'll tell you, it was like people don't understand. Like, if you were born in the mid '90s on on from there you don't know man it's like like fast food places they had like they had like uh uh, uh they had a vibe like yeah. they had a vibe like now they're they're very sterile it's very just like right. you know the food tastes still the same it's still pretty good but like they had a vibe like like there were colors associated like burger king was orange and brown that was their color scheme and there w and it was wood grain and whatever. Yeah, like, remember the was, old school burgers? Wood yeah, grain it was school. awesome. Like we talked before on here about the sit down pizza huts. You went in, it was all like that deep red vinyl. Yeah. It was dark. Yeah, there was the the hanging lamps. Each place had its own aesthetic. It was sure. vibes, man. Yeah. Like and and it was like its own weird little experience. And also Taco I Bell's, like like that that there's like that website of like. Uh, of converted Taco Bells or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's like Taco Bell, they all had the same shape building where it looked like yeah. looked like a mission or something. It looked like a little like a, yeah, like a... Like or it looked a, like the Alamo or yeah, something. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Time Castle Burger King found fully intact behind a wall at a Delaware mall. Holy shit. Like that old school one with the pink leather, the pink pleather. That's wild. But even that, that's is like still 90s. New, yeah. yeah, that's still new. Uh, the thing is, another thing is like, oh yeah, Burger King, Burger King also had fake plants. Yes, yes, I remember that, and that was the thing. Like the vibe, the decor of the place, weirdly reflected the flavors of the food. Like Burger King, definitely had a like warmer, like cozier feel. Like I the agree. taste of the food is smokier. It's you know flame broiled, all that bullshit. Sesame seed bun. Yeah, and, and the colors in there reflected that. McDonald's was, to me, was more like, it was like cartoony and like popped, like, you know, boom, red, ketchup, bang, you know? Like, it was like, and that's what it felt like in there when you went in. <laughs> I, I I always said to Pinkstone, I go, McDonald's is cartoon food. That's what I love about it. Like, it's like, it's they make it in a way where it's like, this is like a hamburger that I picture like like Tom and Jerry eating. Yeah, something. yeah, it's like, yeah. It's like I, got I can't that. like it's it's anyway, that's Check this out. that's where it got its hooks in. Ball pits are so dirty it's dangerous. <laughs> Scientists find a single plastic ball could have thousands of germ cells like 
pneumonia, sepsis, and meningitis. I mean, public ball pits are notorious hiding places for children's accidents, frisky teenagers, and foreign objects. Are you telling someone me someone got a handy under the balls? I guess so. I'm not no surprised. No way. It is weird if a teenager's under the balls and there's kids in there. I mean, it's odd. Yeah, but I maybe if you hit the right hour at night and you're there with a gal and you, yeah. you jump in and you yeah. just do a quick I don't but know I never I never imagined semen in the I'll ball tell pit. you this is why kids probably got less sick back then because kids are jumping in researchers ball pits. at the University of North Georgia tested balls from pits at six physical therapy centers they found 31 different kinds of bacteria that can cause skin eye heart blood and lung infections as well as sepsis, pneumonia, and meningitis. Cleaning practices for ball pits are not standardized, but the new study suggests they should be. No shit. I always wanted a ball they pit in my house. They always do a study like this. But here's the thing. They always do a study like this and say these <laughs> things. No, but what the fuck is a kid going, dude, I got sepsis from uh, the ball pit? Dude, I mean... Is there a confirmed if case? You, if you think about it... How could they have been allowed? Right now, we have health department ratings that we didn't have back then. The health department rates your establishment if you're a food establishment and ranks it from A, B, C, D, fail. You have to have a passing grade. They give you. There's no way those could exist in today's day and age. How could they put. Imagine a ball pit that was there for, let's just call it 10 years, uncleaned. Mm hmm. What were we thinking? And how could people let their kids go in but it? Here's my point. Do you know any kids that had sepsis? <laughs> I don't know <laughs> about like, sepsis specifically. But uh, do you ever? Do you know any kids that had pneumonia? I don't. I, I, one, my dad had pneumonia sure once. It happened, man. I can't. It's not from a ball pit. I'm sure it happened. I mean, you know, I'm sure. It, my point is, is look, you lick one of those balls, you're getting sick. I mean, look, what idiot kid? <laughs> you're an idiot enough of a kid to lick one of the balls. First I mean, of all, no. I mean, you as an adult, I mean, a kid's licking the balls. If the kids, <laughs> that sounded terrible. I never did. If kids, I knew better as a if kid. If a kid's than not young lick enough, the they're ball. gonna bite the ball, throw but, the ball. But uh, let's lick the ball. But you're gonna. You're oh, gonna, remember that dude? Yeah, the pirate. Yeah, he's great. Oh, he you had would a, go head. Oh, there's a pirate ship too. It was like yeah. a, a watchtower. I forgot about that. You would go head first into the balls. But I mean, dive in so like it was the ocean. Licking the ball, you're just diving into it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, did you? Did you? I, mean, I get dream? it, but did you? Oh, yeah, the grimmest prison. It was all little prisons. Oh, was it a was it a grimace prison too? Yeah, look, it's like bars. I mean, it was just so you could see you can't out fall of it. Out. Yeah, but it was like it's funny that they didn't paint the bars purple <laughs> because like it would have matched at least. Maybe there was like a rule that you weren't allowed to. It was like a safety rule or something. A couple things. One, I think that when you throw a party at McDonald's, at least for a certain amount of time, I think that the characters were included. I mean, if you had I to, can't, I, I, I think if so, you I had to play remember, place, yeah. then that's that's good enough. But like for me, the big calling card was Ronald makes an appearance. We should. It we was should, like it blew your balls off. We should do that this year for my birthday. We we dropped the ball last year. We should do it this year. <laughs> I'll tell you what. We should just do it. Did I tell you what we did in college? What? Uh, once a year, we had. Um, we had we went to Burger King uh -huh. uh, on uh, Tyson's Lane and Highland Boulevard of Staten Island. We went to Burger King, and we printed up menus. We printed menus up, and then we went and we put white tablecloths on all the tables, salt and pepper yeah. shakers, and we put um, candles. Uh -huh. And then we had we had people put on like a uniform, like a tux, like a tux, and we had people come over and give us the menus, take our order, then go. And There's a McDonald's downtown that does that. Really? There's we a McDonald's it ourselves. There's like so just what, for you fun. would buy all the food and bring it home and then do this? No, 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 no. We turn the Burger King into our own personal restaurant. They would, the Burger King would let you yeah, do they that. Didn't care. There's, there's a McDonald's in, in New, Pimp. Look up McDo Manhattan fancy McDonald's. There's a McDonald's in New York. McDonald's that does on, it. on Broadway. I think it's 24 hours and two floors has a baby grand piano in it that a guy plays. That's that's the fancy McDonald's. Yeah. Is it still open? Look, concierge, it said. <laughs> you called them concierge once and I went off on yeah, you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, Including the saddest McDonald's in the world. The saddest one has to be the one next to the cellar, right? Right? Is that, calling, click, click on the one that says it's the link that says the Are they the calling this this? <laughs> Where's that? H Street? Where's that? I look like H Street. Oh, because there's too much violence. Oh, yeah. Oh, is that the yeah the Eighth Avenue? One. Yeah, I'm in Eighth Avenue. <laughs> uh, okay, right. wait, go back to the fancy McDonald's real quick. Is it still open? 
That's not the same one I'm talking about. I'm talking about maybe Soho. I thought there was one downtown. No, yeah, there's there's one. The one you're talking about is downtown, and they have like tablecloths. Fanciest McDonald's we've ever seen. <laughs> Factor. Thank you, Factor, for sponsoring the show. It is prime spring season, and you're going to need some wholesome, convenient meals to energize you for this warmer, more active day activity that you're going to be getting into, and you want to keep track of reaching your goals. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, can help you fuel up fast with ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You're going to save time. You're going to eat well. You're going to tackle everything on your to-do list. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a service I use. Um, it's a subscription service, so it comes every week. You can pick your own meals, or uh, they can pick them for you. And they have all sorts of proteins and different uh, categories like keto and calorie smart, veggie. Uh, they range from like 400 calories, maybe 380 to like 600. The thing I love about them, Joe, is every single. <laughs> it's just funny. Every single one of them uh -huh. is. Two minutes. Yes, I agree. exactly. Two minutes in the microwave, and they are like they're not frozen; they're fresh made. And like, if you're hungry, you're eating in two minutes. If you're in a rush, you're eating in two minutes. And I love the fact that the portion control is done for you because I feel satiated because they have protein in there, but I don't overeat. I agree a hundred percent, and I like that factor is uh, making uh, sustainable decisions, by the way. They offset 100% of delivery emissions to your door. They source 100% renewable electricity for the production sites and offices, and they feature sustainably sourced seafood in the meals. Factor's just great all around. So do your thing. Go get some Factor. No prep, no mess. Two minutes ready. Head to factormeals.com slash tastebuds50. You're going to use code tastebuds50 and get 50% off your first box. Oh. That's Code TasteBuds50 at FactorMeals.com slash TasteBuds50 to get 50% off your first. Vessi, Vessi, Vessi. In a world where most people complain about the rain, here comes the rain again. Annie Lennox. I'm only happy when it rains. That's not a complaint, but still, it's somebody that Garbage. knows Shirley Manson? the rain is coming. Yes. Vessi is here to believe there's a bright side to the wet weather, and that's the type of shoes... They are providing for you. Yeah, they hard flex with waterproof technology that is their own. It's proprietary. It's great. It and is... I love it. And it, I got a pair of Vessies in the mail. Me too. And I opened them up. I'm like, I, I normally, I'm a sneaker guy, and I normally like, I'm very particular about my shoes. I tried them on. I was like, not only are they waterproof, they literally were so comfortable. I gave my dad a pair, and then I ordered the boots myself. And what's really cool uh Vessi has created a product that lets you thrive in water, okay, uh, while also supporting organizations that protect and create it. Uh, I like these shoes because they're comfortable, they're stylish, they slip right on super fast, and they let you keep moving in the rain. You're not afraid if you step in the puddle. You're not afraid if the drops start coming down. Again, you're thriving in the water. It's awesome. They're 100% waterproof. Proof, not resistant. Lightweight comfort, all right? Four-way stretch. Uh, they're, they, they, they're, they're malleable, as they say. Uh, versatile. They're easy to clean. They're super easy to clean, which is great because sometimes when you're in the rain, also comes the mud. Vessi is great. So experience the bright side of wet weather uh, and take advantage of Vessi's huge Memorial Day sale going on. Vessi.com slash taste buds. You're going to save 30% off your order. That's V-E-S-S-I dot com slash taste buds. To save 30% off your order today. Don't wait too long to grab your favorite Vessi shoes because this sale ends soon. No, that's not it. The Times Square one, I used to call it Fortress McDonald's. It had like steel walls and stuff. The Times Square one is awesome. That's 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 not it, though. That's the Times Square one. That's that's not it. Um, Did you buy like even one share of McDonald's stock just, <laughs> just to say you're a partial owner? I mean, you know, at this at this stage, I probably should. But. <laughs> did you ever? Did you dream as well? Did you dream your whole life to have a ball pit in your house? Or no? Is it just me? Did you? Did you? Did no, you, my you dream. Never did, you never did, pimp. No, no my dream not. was my dream from a kid. First time I ever saw a ball pit, I said I'm going to have that one day. And I don't know if you watch Architectural Digest Open Door series. You may have talked about this. There's a model and an actress. I guess Carla Delavine. I think her name is. I might be saying it wrong. She uh, her house. Wait, she built. A, she built a ball pit in her house. I and I, I was like, 
Son of a bitch. I, uh, my dream was always 80s arcade in my house. Same. And I started yeah, doing it when I lived pit, in LA bro. by buying machines and then the, the machines. But why a ball pit? What, what about a ball pit do you love? It's so much fun. As long as it, it's, it's, you know, in discounting never, the germs. I've never loved a ball pit. It is. It's, it's it. like a different way to submerge yourself and feel like. Are you seeing this? The sensation. Look at this McDonald's. Are you seeing this? Look at this. Pip, you got to put pictures of this. That up. can't be real. This is real. I'm telling you. I've been hearing about this for years. I can't believe I never went. I don't know why. The guy's in a suit and she's in a gown. Yeah, they bring it. The waiter brings it. <laughs> and they played it. How have I never gone to wait, this? Wait, wait. Is, is that on a paper plate? It is. Upscale? You served it on a paper plate. Oh, it's right here. We should do it. We should do it. We should do like a, 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 a excursion for the pot. Bring the, bring the camera. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So you never yeah, wanted no, a ball we pit. Have to do. Do that. you think I'm crazy if I put a ball pit in my house? No. Would but you? You're how are you going to keep it clean? You just read the sepsis thing. We don't have little kids. I, I look. I First think. First of all, trust me. It'll be clean. <laughs> First I mean, of all. But, but would you guys jump in it? Right. The expense. Have you ever seen yes, a ball of pit course. that you didn't jump in? Uh, of course I would jump Ikea in Didn't Ikea have a ball pit too? I can't remember. Something had a, some department store had a ball pit. Not McDonald's. I think it was, my, maybe it was Ikea. It is, right? I think Ikea had one. Listen, of course I would jump in it. And That's what I'm saying. of course I wouldn't be worried about germs. I'm saying to you, you want to accrue the cost of getting that cleaned once a week? Or whatever? Accrue? <laughs> I put all the plastic balls in a couple of garbage bags. I put them outside. I hose them down. Do you know the <laughs> amount of time and effort that's going to take? All right. Then I hire a cleaning service to come in and clean the balls. I think it's gonna. I think that's a heftier cost than you think it's going to be, dude. I, I think that's a hefty cost. I don't think so. I think it's just a matter of like, I could, I could even throw them in the washing machine. What are you, <laughs> nuts? Don't melt. You can't do that. I feel like there's a way to clean them. There's definitely a way. I'm saying it's gonna it's gonna be. I mean, the, will the, it will it will it will it take a day if if I really did a piecemeal? Yeah. Will I do it? No. I'll 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 outsource that. I think the real question is, are you gonna have a slide? It's a must. Yeah, I I, I would say if you can do it and it doesn't ruin your life to maintain it, yeah, and then yes, I'll, you I'll tell you something right now. I don't want to be. I don't want to keep time with someone that if there was a ball pit in front of them, <laughs> they they would not jump in it. That's how I those if, if you're not someone that has to jump in a ball pit on site upon site, I don't want you in my life. Fair enough. I can't argue that. I can't if argue. If I see that. a ball pit, I literally have to be physically restrained okay. because I will run and All jump right. in it. All right. And if there's All a right. kid under the balls I didn't know about, it's gonna be <laughs> curtains. Curtains for the child. Oh, that's so interesting. There were urban legends about kids being killed or injured. By vipers hanging in the ball pit. That's why Jackass did that in in the movie. No. They did the vipers or the anacondas in the ball pit. I heard about the needles. I didn't realize that was actually based on something. I didn't either. That's terrifying. You know, you release a viper in a ball pit and jump in and just see what happens. <laughs> I love that. It, you're you're in the middle of Jersey and somebody has a viper. <laughs> it's so crazy. All right, we got to we should get to the battle. Um, today's battle. Is oh so and by the way, I don't have COVID. Feeling sick yesterday was apparently just a fall off of the allergies. Uh, it just went away eventually, and I feel a hundred percent today. So got a hundred percent to rose. I'm okay. Um, anyway, here we go. Such a good mood. Our battle today. You gonna come on the cruise? Yeah, send the offer. Would you like to send the offer? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, of course I'm going to come on the cruise. Uh, the Impractical Jokers are doing a cruise, our fifth cruise with Eric Andre. It's January 22nd to the 26th, 2024, going from, I believe, Miami to the Bahamas. Are you filming on there? Um, we we have on three of the four of them, so it's TBD, but it has been floated. Do we want to film on there? And Eric Andre is going to be on it with you? Eric Andre is throwing it with us. He's oh, he's God. he's literally the other co-host of it. Let's awesome. do it. We had a big call yesterday about uh, a bunch of like the stuff we're going to do. 
It was crazy. But you both you, taste buds came up. Yeah, I was gonna say. So, let's um, do a. We we should do a yeah. live. Ta- tickets are on. The, tickets the, are on sale right now on Practical Joker's Cruise. I think it's yeah. called or Get Ship Faced. Get shipface.com. The boat's already half sold out on, on pre sale. I'm not trying to write any checks here, but I was going to say, of course. Let's, it will be fun to do, right? Let's. I'm 100% want to do okay. it. Both you, Q, and Eric have said at separate times to me, are you going to come on the cruise? Yeah. I'm going to come on the cruise. Let's get the paperwork done. Let's uh, sort it out. <laughs> and let's lock it in. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait, dude. And how fun would it be if we were able to do a live taste buds on this thing? Yeah. How fun would that and be? And how many? There'll be at least a dozen other comics there. We could have like a I had a blast on the Joker's cruise the first time. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. Yes, I'm in. Let's do it. Okay. All right. Here we go. <coughs> Today. Uh, we're doing peppermint versus butterscotch. Candies. Hard candies. Uh, hard candies, basically. And I, I'd say this will drift a little bit into the flavors themselves, right? Sure. You know? But but yeah, basically, it's it's grandmother's purse to my mouth from God to God's ears. <laughs> uh the butterscotch versus the peppermint. I am team butterscotch. Sal is team peppermint. And it's time to B A T T L E butts. All right. Uh, I'm in such a good mood. I didn't want to do the yeah, uh, it's not insult chant. And I also didn't feel a need to do an I love you chant. I'm with you. Yeah. All right. That's a good mood. That's the mood I'm in. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, I'm going to start I, by saying this. I don't want to. I don't want to divert us anymore. But did I ever tell you about? Peppermint gummy bear, the drag queen that I befriended thirty years ago. For, I thought, I swear to God, I thought you were saying peppermint flavored gummy bears, and I was no. going to barf. Peppermint gummy bear. When you said it's the name of a drag queen, could be the greatest drag queen name I've ever heard in my yeah. life. Yeah. So, 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 I, th- I definitely told this story, Pimpy. It might have been on Hey Babe, but I'll make it quick. But it just, it's, it's appropriate. So, sh- this person is now famous. I met this person in the year two thousand. 23 years later, oh, he, he is, he, I, think, I believe he's a drag queen. So he um, is like the, the, like a RuPaul level figurehead spokesperson for the drag queen community, especially in New York. Um, Love it. I was at a nightclub and I met this, this guy, I, I, his name's Kevin actually, and, uh, and he was with a, a girl and all my friends were there, and I was having a house party the next night because my pa- my parents were going on vacation, and I was having one of those humdinger house parties where like what happened was some friends came over early and we removed the furniture from the home. Oh wow! We put all the furniture from the house in my sister's bedroom like Jenga. How old are you at this point? I was um, I was uh, twenty five, twenty three. Okay, <laughs> twenty three something like that. I don't. Know. It was two thousand, two thousand. Uh, Two, something like that. Okay. And so we met these people, and we hung out with them all night, right? And he wasn't dressed in drag. Mm-hmm. And they were really fun. They say, and I said, look, I'm having a house party tomorrow. You guys want to come? They were from another borough. And so I gave them directions, and they took, like, literally the bus to the trains of the fucking ferry, and they came to my Holy house. Holy shit. Okay? So he says to me, would you mind if I bring a friend? And I say, no, as long as you... I just met these two people. Right. And they seem very nice. I don't know, but I was like, sure, just, you know, yeah. no problem, but just make sure they're good people. The next day, my friends come. We remove all the furniture. We all chip in money. We go to the liquor store. We get, like, as much liquor as we can afford. We get, like, the strobe lights. We hang sheets to block out the windows. Yeah. Turn those lights on. All three floors of my parents' house, I had about 50 people, 60 people in there. Wow. I, and I, it, was, it was a pajama party. Okay. So everyone came in pajamas, and whoever wanted to crash, crashed. Like thir- like 20 people crashed. It was one of those things where people are laying on the floor. Right. It wasn't debauchery. It was fun. Right. Good yeah. people. The doorbell rings at like two hours into the party. Right. And I told my friends, I met this guy and this girl last night. They're going to come hang. You know, just make them feel welcome. I open the door, and there's a drag queen at the door. Mm-hmm. And it's him. And... I guess his coy way of saying, can I bring a friend, was just like cutesy way of saying, I'm going to come in drag. Okay. But, and he brought the girl. The girl was so cute, too. I had a little crush on her. But uh, I was just like, and he was like, hello, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God. And he's like, I'm Peppermint Gummy Bear. <laughs> <laughs> and he had, he, he had on a full outfit, and they walked in. And everyone was like, what the Love hell? It. Imagine a drag queen walks into... 
a a, a, a a pajama house party at full at when it's at its full strong. I love it. I love it, it just amped everybody up. Everyone starts going nuts. Everyone just starts dancing with him. I love then it. Then he tells me, "Would you mind if I go into the bathroom and change into something more comfortable?" I said, "Go ahead." He goes into the bathroom. He comes out in an even more outrageous outfit. <laughs> it's hot pink leather pleather outfit with with uh what do you call those shoes? Uh, no. You know, the shoes that are like platforms. Yeah. He was already tall. He came out, he was like seven feet tall. And he's just walking around my house. They stayed the whole night till the break of dawn. And then I drove them back to the ferry at like 7 a.m. Holy shit. I, it turns out a month later, I'm at a nightclub again. I, I met him at this club called Ohm. A couple months later, I'm at Limelight. I used to go, you know, I used to be into that. Never my scene. <laughs> not it, was, a it was short lived, but it was fun. I'm not and a I'm on guy. stage. I'm on the stage dancing, which you know the stage was open. Everybody, so the stage was crowded. The dancer was crowded, and he across the room, all the way to the other side, of the dance floor. I see him because he's like a foot tall than everyone else, and he sees me in the middle of limelight, and he just yells. And he's known there. He's a fixture there. Apparently, the place parts. <laughs> he walks through the dance floor, gets on stage, comes. Hugs me, gives me a big kiss, and we start dancing. And the whole place is like, "What the fuck is going on?" That's awesome, right? Twenty. I'll never forget the guy. A year or two ago, I'm like, I wonder if this guy like. I, I was like, I just typed in peppermint gummy bear. But he shortened it to just peppermint. Mm -hmm. He is literally an icon. That's awesome, right now. I don't know if he'll him I, he has to remember me. We should try to Tell get him. We got to. We have. We have to reach out yeah. to him. Get him on taste buds. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, I'll reach out to him. I'm, I, he has to remember me because it was such a unique experience. <coughs> I'm sorry for the diversion. It's okay. But um, I love but it. That was that was a fun little story. Yeah. Um. All right. You're team peppermint. I'm team butterscotch. I will start by saying this. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. I mean, look, butterscotch. <sighs> It's 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 the OG. I mean, it's it is it's the it's it's the first before there was candy, and a guy said, "I I have invented candy." It was butterscotch. I'd be interested this to know though, because peppermint, but peppermint hard candy has also got to be from the from the beginning, according to folklore. In sixteen seventy, uh, let's, let's stress folklore in that sentence. The choir master at the Cologne Cathedral, Cathedral. in Cologne, Germany was searching for a way in which to quiet restless children during Christmas Eve Mass. He asked a local candy maker to create what were then referred to as sugar sticks to eat during the service to keep... Well, that's the going. invention of the candy cane. The peppermint candy. No, no, no. That's the invention of the candy cane. Christmas Eve Mass, sugar sticks, peppermint. That's wow. That's got to be what that is. Now, shit. I forgot <laughs> about candy canes. Well, boy, you got me there. Because I can't think of... Well, I, I fairly won't put candy cane into this. I'm talking about the plastic-wrapped bowl dish of hard candy that is the direct competitor to the butterscotch. I will, here's, this isn't candy cane. Here's the thing with peppermint for me, okay? I like peppermint. I'm fine with peppermint. It freshens your breath. I think it's great. I enjoy the flavor. However, peppermint to me is only serves only serves that purpose. It is a means to freshen your breath. Butterscotch, like if we were trapped in this room for weeks or days and we were like, dude, we're going to starve to death in here, and we scrounged up butterscotch candies, I would actually feel like I ate, I would, that to me almost feels like a food. Sustenance? Some kind of sustenance. <coughs> Peppermint, I don't care what shape or form you put it in, it will never, ever feel like sustenance to me. Ever in a million years, it is it's toothpaste flavor. It's 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 flavored. It's it's a freshener. That's well, all it is. Well, I, I mean, only because I'm of the age I'm at now, the peppermint for weeks for sustenance would cause me tremendous heartburn. Sure, but other than that, I would say that butterscotch is is good. I don't dislike butterscotch, but butterscotch butterscotch won also a great drag name. <laughs> You're right, <laughs> son of a bitch. Um, well, that'll be Harris. <laughs> um, I think Butterscotch, though, you have to Butterscotch have one. is the name of the greatest beatboxer I've ever seen. Really? This young woman named Butterscotch. I So, Rozelle, who's amazing. Sure. I was about to, that's the person I thought Rozelle, of. You, uh, Rozelle was in a group called Peeping Tom, started founded by Mike Patton from Faith No More. <laughs> yeah. And Mike Patton's one of my favorite musicians ever. Faith No More is one of my favorite bands ever. I love all his bands. But anyway, he had a band called Peeping Tom, and Rozelle was in it. 
and I saw them multiple saw times them. live. They're saw great. Them in Central Park. There, they were great. But one time when I saw them, Rozell wasn't there, and instead they had this girl Butterscotch, Butterscotch sat in. And I was like, oh, man, Rozell's on here. And then he gave the stage over to Butterscotch at one point. And I was like, They're not going to put someone up there shit. that has to fill in for Rozell. That's not going to be skilled. She was like, it was like mind blowing yeah. how good she was. You know anyway, the hours that has to be put into that? I, it's so nuts. Well, that what's his face from uh, from uh, Freestyle Love uh, Shockwave? Mm -hmm. He's really good. Yeah. Um, anyway. Rocket money, rocket money, rocket money. Money. I love these guys. They're with us like every week. Thank you for supporting our pod, Rocket Money. And I yes. love, I love what you offer. I mean, I I use it. I use it all the time. I have my lady using it. I got my mom to use it, especially my parents, because like, what this is is it's it's an app that basically finds out all of your outstanding subscriptions that you have out there that you may not know about. Yeah. Puts them in one place. Yes. Okay. And then it's an aggregate, and then you can cancel right there with yes. the click of a button instead of trying to remember who you have a subscription with, how much is it, is it reoccurring, did yes. it get canceled, what do you have to even do to cancel that thing? Sometimes yes. they make you write a. F <laughs> Just say it again. It's okay. Sometimes they make you write a. A letter, like it's it has not, to be like fresh ink letter to it's cancel. Not, something. Yeah, it's like sometimes you want to cancel like a streaming service, and it's like trying to unsubscribe from a gym membership. Yeah, this or is something. a personal finance app yeah. that puts it all in one place. Eighty percent of people forget about their subscriptions. Yeah, it's true. Uh, uh, Rocket Money will quickly and easily find those subscriptions for you, and for any uh, that you don't want or you don't want to pay for anymore, you just hit cancel, as Sal said. Rocket Money's going to cancel it for you. It's that easy. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, saving the average person up to $720 a year. And one other thing is uh, you can also manage all your finances in one place. It can automatically categorize your expenses so you can keep track of your budgets in real time. So Stop throwing your money away. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash taste buds. That's rocketmoney.com slash taste buds. Rocketmoney.com slash taste buds. Babes, I love it too. I am filming my special at the Vic in Chicago on December 1st and 2nd, and thus I am also kicking off a tour. I will be all over the place. Bowling Green, Kentucky, Cincinnati, Ohio, Toledo, Wilkes-Barre, Wilmington, Delaware, Torrington, Connecticut, uh, Macon, Georgia. You ever go there? Savannah, Georgia, Athens, Georgia, Peoria, Rockford, Springfield, all in Illinois, Duluth, Appleton, Rochester, Minnesota, uh, I'm going to be all over. I'm going to be, uh, like I said, in Hartford, and I'm going to be in Syracuse doing some clubs and some theaters. That'll all be announced very, very soon. But if you want to see me right away, you just see me on tour with the guys in PracticalJokersLive.com. Uh, this weekend coming up, we're on Columbus, Cleveland, Detroit, then Minneapolis, Des Moines, Kansas City, and then we close out in Nashville, Indianapolis, and St. Louis. All those tickets are on sale right now at PracticalJokersLive.com. But, but Butterscotch, right? Um, what is what is butterscotch comprised of? It's not butter and scotch. Why is it called butterscotch? Well, it's funny because scotch does have a butterscotch flavor to it. It could be buttery, I suppose. One one is its obvious connection to the country of Scotland. Buttery yeah. toffee is sometimes called butterscotch. Another another that the word scotch was derived from. Scorch. Scorch. The word butterscotch was first recorded in Doncaster, a Yorkshire, a Yorkshire city in England, who began making candy in 18th And I got to say. So the, this peppermint came first. These are both foods, by the way. These are both foods that when you take them, I'll say this. When you take these foods out of their candy form, or these flavors, excuse me, out of their candy form and infuse them in other ways, I don't like it. I think mint chocolate chip ice cream is disgusting. I had it two nights ago from Van Leeuwen. It makes me sick. I think I think mint iced tea is revolting. Um, but, and I don't like scotch, the liquor scotch. I like whiskey. I can't stand scotch. Sure. And one of the reasons is because it tastes too much like butterscotch. But I will <sighs> say this. I like... I like but the uh, butterscotch as a flavor of something has more use to me than peppermint does. Like if you gave me ice cream with butterscotch syrup, I'd be like, okay, this is pretty good. Peppermint ice cream, I can't tell you how gross I think that is. It doesn't matter. That's literally that has nothing to do with this battle. Sorry. Butterscotch, you have one, it's pleasant. After one, I don't want another. I've had enough of the feeling and taste of butterscotch. Okay. I I'm not gonna go ahead and say it's an old people candy. It is. I see its value outside of senior citizens, 
But <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Do it. I just saw Jeremy. Right, peppermint candy equals Christmas. Butterscotch candy equals funerals. <laughs> That's really. I'll tell funny. you this. Sorry, I'll tell sorry. you this. It, you know. You know. Like, um, I, we we were, I, we were just at a birthday party the other night. Actually, this is where this came from. Actually, yes, we were at we were at Che's birthday party. Yes, and it, the theme was old because he he's getting older. And so they had fun stuff that had to do with that theme. And at every table was a bowl of butterscotch candies, those little strawberry raz candies. Yes. And mints. And that's where we got the battle from. Oh, those strawberries. I those, forgot about yeah. those. Yeah. <laughs> now, I will tell you, though, that a lot of times when there's a bowl of candy, these are to be chosen from. And I will always choose the mint because the mint has more value to me. Even if I don't want to have it right then, I'm like, oh, let me take a mint and put it in my pocket or put it in my bag because at some point... This mint will literally serve a purpose for me. Is it it's tasty? A, yes. Do I want to suck on it all day? No. But if I'm going to have one of the mints, why not also completely it's freshen a breath, my breath? It's a breath freshener. That's all, that's my point, though. That's all but it, it is. But it isn't, right? Because a peppermint, you, because a candy cane is face, not a breath freshener. But if your face, I, I, I can't tell you the last time I've had a candy cane. I can't tell you the last time I've wanted a candy cane. I, I you don't have at least one candy cane per Christmas? Read my lips. Useless to me. Useless. I like sucking on the candy my, cane. I go brush my teeth and then I'll eat cookies. I mean, what are we doing here? It's Christmas time. I like sucking on the candy cane uh, until the, the the red goes away and it's just white and uh, then it and then it forms like a sharp edge that you can use as a shiv. I, I, the, you never did that. Let me tell you. I one time I got it so sharp I actually I actually cut skin. Yeah. All right. The only candy cane grosser to me than the regular candy is cane is the fucking I know the it. cherry one, the rainbow. The cherry one makes me is sick. that the rainbow one? Whatever the whatever the one that's like green and red and it tastes like fruit. No, the one it's that's so the one gross. that's the full rainbow is gross. I don't. There's one that's meant to taste like cherry and it's disgusting. It's disgusting. You know, I choked on a butterscotch candy when I was young at the doctor's office, right? I told you that. Oh, and you a, sound like a kid that licks balls. And uh, <laughs> You're dumb. I, I, they had a they, <laughs> they had a basket there. It just said for kids to that was the that was the point of it, right? It just said they invented it as a way for kids to calm down when they're. In the, I ate a butterscotch candy. I was playing in the waiting room, and I started choking. I think I told this story too, but whatever. Um, I started choking, and I was with my mom, who's already a warrior, and she's like, "Oh my god!" And like the nurses or whatever behind the counter that there when you check in at the doctor's office, they just like froze and didn't do anything, and I was like. <laughs> I remember, and a hefty woman, a brick shit house of a woman, stood up and just came at me. She was like, Mrs. What's a person from Matilda? I don't know. Mrs. Don't Trumbull? Don't she know. just came at me and she went and she swooped down and her, grabbed my ankles with her two hands and then had the confidence that she had the strength to lift me by the ankles in one clean jerk. Like that and my head wouldn't swing down and, and hit she? the ground. She lifted me right up and then like a cartoon shook me like this <laughs> by my ankles like a fucking cartoon. I was upside down <laughs> flailing and the candy came out. And then my mother started screaming at the nurses for freezing. And she's like, this woman has to hang him upside down while you watch? We're at the doctor. And I, it and you know, been, it didn't even sour butterscotch. It would have been so great if you died. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this was your method for saving. And then what? <laughs> if you died, because this insane method just didn't work. I know. And she would look so crazy with a dead kid by the ankles. Your mother go, what are you doing? <laughs> I, I gotta I gotta remember to write. This could be a bit. I, I could tell this story. This story is crazy. Yeah, oh dude, my god. Can I tell you? I've never had that happen to me again because it's a very unique situation. I choked on a uh, But you've never had someone grab you by the ankles and shake you upside I down. I choked on a mint. Peppermint lifesaver uh, as a kid. A breath saver? A breath saver. Okay. What are you doing here? I'm, I got a hopper in from the Celsius I just drank. I'm going to take a All right. antacid. Give it one second. Let me just, you know, give it a second. I mean, this is, come on. <laughs> this is Bush League here. What are you doing? Is it? Oh, my God. All right. All right. Here's my, I choked on a mint lifesaver, and my pop-up, who lived with us when I was a little kid, this was when I was in the first grade. Picked me up by the stomach. 
like hoisted me and did the Heimlich to me. <laughs> he, he knew how, or he just he, he just flew no, by the seat of his how. pants. He knew how. He picked me up from behind and got me up and went pull pull and dude, it shot out of my my map my throat with a trajectory you could have taken an eye out with it like wow it was crazy how well, I guess hard a lot of kids out. you have a choke on candy no but you I have had, a choke I had to save Chaz from choking Chaz Pomateri he was choking. on candy <laughs> he, no he was choking on a chicken cutlet it was just me and him <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> And he starts doing like the, the hands around the neck staring I at me. You told me that. Yeah, and, and I don't know. <coughs> no, he didn't. Yeah, he he went like this to and, you, and he couldn't breathe, and he was like he was making weird sounds. <laughs> and I was watching him die, and I was really high, so I didn't know what to do. So I just kind of dry humped him, and eventually, <laughs> <laughs> holy shit! Yeah. Somebody has to animate that. Somebody has to camera? animate that. No, we were having lunch between pods. He's oh my god, dude! Do you understand that you you might you might be. How many people on the planet? Eight billion? You might be one of eight billion that can say, Chaz Palmateri was choking on a chicken cutlet and I saved his life by humping him. And I'll never behind. forget, he kind of threw up a little in the sink and he said that was the worst form I've ever experienced. Apparently, he chokes often. Form? The yeah. worst form. Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. The first thing. This he... is your responsibility? <laughs> this guy's choking himself left and right. It's your wait, problem? And wait. Then he paid for lessons. What? He, he did? <laughs> yeah. Hold on, Pim. <laughs> How the fuck? How do you not Hold make on. this a full pod episode? <laughs> how do you also too? How is this? Please write this down. We need to get Chaz Palminteri on Taste Buds. Oh okay. uh, yeah, he'll come. I mean, we've got to get him on Taste Buds and talk wait, to him. Wait, we wait, have wait. to. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, we'll do an Italian dish. Yeah, he, yeah, he's yeah. very opinionated. We should yeah. do it at his restaurant. Mid yes, that'd be fun. Yes, and on location, are. that'd be fun. Wait, the first thing he did after you ostensibly you saved his life yeah. was. Critique and criticize the form you used. Yep. Not a thank you. There was a thank you after that. That's so funny. And then we went right back to pod, and he never. That is it. chaos. <laughs> that is chaos. So he, he didn't chokes, just go thank he you. Chokes on the reg. <laughs> yeah, he had. Uh, well, he was offered Tony Soprano, and he had to turn it down because he had throat cancer. Okay. And so after the treatments, his throat is short. So. Oh wow! Well, he would have been a great throat. Tony Soprano. He's got short throat. <laughs> All right. No, I never heard of it. Uh, right. Could you imagine? I didn't. Wow, he was. He, wow, he. Imagine missed, me standing he, there with him dead, and what? What does that look like? I don't know. Uh, it doesn't look good. <laughs> yeah, doesn't look good for you. I'd say also cut, like, your, I'd cut your podcast producing uh, work in half, probably. Yeah. You know, also probably Jail. would be the, probably the most famous person to die from choking since Mama Ma Cass. I would. I would who, argue that who too. died choking on a ham sandwich, which I think is urban legend. But I often that, I that's often, a terrible headline. Chaz I'm, Palminteri dies from choking on a chicken cutlet. <laughs> I'm embarrassed to admit this. I often <laughs> eat too fast without chewing, and get food stuck like here. Where I have to like, I'll, if I drink fluid to push it down, like fluid will back up in my throat, and I will have to go into a room, throw the food up that got stuck. It's horrible. It's happened to me on dates, like where I've had to go to the bathroom and like, and like the girl will be like, "Are you okay? You were gone for like thirty five minutes, dude." One time I had a girl of my really place embarrassing. Was sitting on my couch and I was in a, I have a studio apartment and the kitchen was like that way but you couldn't see the sink from the couch and the, the, the whole place was like 300 square feet and I felt so sick and nauseous and it was at night and we were like sitting on the couch like I think we were making out or whatever and I was like oh hold on I got to go get something out of the out of the kitchen and I went into the kitchen turned on turned on the sink and just threw up in the sink <laughs> And I tried to mask it with the sound, and then I still had to throw up, but I was taking too long. So mid throw up, I popped my head out and be like, "One second. And then I went back and threw up again. And then I went into the bathroom and brushed my teeth. And I have no idea if she knew that I threw up or not, but I threw up so much, and she was like seven feet away. If it wasn't if it wasn't for the noise, there'd be no embarrassment in throwing up. I don't know. If you open your mouth and all this shit just spilled out of it in silence, saying, that's still pretty you could embarrassing. Go in the <laughs> you go like, in it. You go to, you go, I just be like, I, I don't, I'm not another about room. Well. You go to another room and it's dead silent. You, oh, in silent. If she doesn't know, that's what I'm saying. If it wasn't for the noise, the only reason you, you mean if it wasn't for the noise, I get away with it. You're going. Oh, I'm worried about. You know. Yeah, it's because oh, they might hear me. That's you know. I, I wonder to this. It day, also looks crazy. I actually just saw her recently at a party, and I always think, uh, do you know what? Did she know I threw up that night? 
we got to go to the phones. We're uh, <laughs> we're uh, we're out of time here. This was a very pleasant battle. We didn't it had re- a grandmom's energy. There to was do a it. lot to talk about. We didn't really really dig into this right now. Uh, I I would say we dug in as much as we could. I my, I stand by I stand by what I said. Butterscotch as a flavor itself has more uses than peppermint. Butterscotch is a candy oh, itself. That I I hard disagree with. I think you flipped that. Peppermint has way more uses than butterscotch. I, I disagree because I think anytime you put it has a paramount use. In my in my opinion, peppermint as a flavor and anything outside of a mint is gross. That's my well, opinion. it's a good thing we're talking about mints. So, butterscotch as a candy has more sustenance and more purpose than a peppermint. Peppermint's only purpose is to serve as a breath freshener. That's my final. There's opinion. no sustenance in butterscotch. I'm just saying to it's me, a, it has more. It's than- a candy just like the, the, the mint. Also, I didn't even get into the chewable. Th- those the other ones, the other peppermints that come in like a ball that they like chalky. The ones that like have the consistency of the diner mints. Yeah. Which, if you talk about the ball pit being bad, that diner mint situation. Yeah, with I was going to say who who you want to talk about disgusting. Who's spreading more disease than a peppermint dish? I mean, it's just it is outrageous. Do still, does diners still do the peppermint yes. dish? Yes, they do. I with haven't spoon, seen like you touch it you're on, with your own. I think it's like you turn it upside down and it falls in your hand. I haven't seen the open air peppermint dish in a long. That was time. big on Staten Island. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, <laughs> with the spoon, and then you just take it on the way out. It's huge. I, I mean, in it was. I, I used to love it back then, but then once I realized, oh no, you shouldn't touch this. It was huge in Philly. Remember the Seinfeld where he fills the napkin with them? Yeah, at Did the you, diner. You're not too young for that, right? No, I remember that. It, it, it might be still happening now. Yeah, I didn't even diner. touch on the. But you know the ones that are wrapped like peppermint and they're red and white, but they're also chalky. And that you could like suck at them. They're like they have that consistency. Okay. That that also kind of is is in play. It's a wrapped peppermint candy. What about peppermint tea? Does that count here? I like peppermint tea. I don't. know. I think peppermint has way more applications. Oh, then butterscotch. Everyone thinks that. Except, <laughs> except them. Um, all right. Why, why doesn't why we got okay, 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 okay. We we ha- we, we have, have to. We have to. We have to. But why has yeah, no, why no, does no, it, why yeah, does well, it that would insinuate that we have to? One second. Why does butterscotch not appeal? To young people, and and but peppermint does though. Peppermint then appeals to all ages. I think butterscotch really just doesn't appeal to younger kids. Uh, I never hear of a young kid being like, "I want a butterscotch." They, they don't want a peppermint either. This is Nana candy. This is what we're saying, and what I'm saying is, is as far as the no, and I disagree. As a child, butterscotch, I, I enjoyed butterscotch far more than I ever enjoyed peppermint. I'll give you this. Far more. I'll give you this. I, I do enjoy a butterscotch dum dum. What's a bu- I don't even know what that is. You don't know what a dum dum is? Oh, the lollipop. Yes. Of course. Butterscotch has more practical purpose as a flavor than peppermint. It doesn't. But I will say dum dums should be against something. Dum dums are iconic. Maybe Smarties. Do you like Smarties? I think Smarties are arguably one of the worst candies <laughs> that is ever we don't we'll get into that smarties let's versus dum dums is let's a good go battle. straight into humble pie okay let's go straight into humble pie we're sorry guys we, we have to kind of skip the phones but we're seeing a lot of my, my nana is not all around to 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 to, to weigh in on this uh humble pie we've got four thousand six hundred votes uh and we'll give the win to the tweet we mentioned earlier that was very funny uh follow that person at can we put the address here? Thanks, Pimp. All right, All right here we roll go. Roll out the percentages, Pimpy. Ooh! Yes! Yes! Oh, yes. The kid is on a hot streak this season. Yes. Butterscotch wins at 58.2% to Peppermint at 41.8%. Damn it. I really, really thought that I would have that, especially I didn't think I'd lose by that much. Whew. Damn. I guess People do respect butterscotch more than I thought. I just, it's like I said, I think people see peppermint as one re- purpose and one purpose Damn. only. To fresh I wish we could have read some phones to understand what the vibe was. But uh, all right, folks, I still love you. I love you too. Don't forget, Wednesday, May 31st, moment.co slash taste buds. Taste buds. They come into the mic, talking about the food they hate, talking about the food they like. Two fools gonna fight, but only one food can be right. Taste buds, man, yeah, they come into the mic.